Welcome back to Breakfast Central. We're taking a conversation to South Africa where its president, Cyril Ramaphosa, will have to wait until Monday, January 16th, to find out whether or not he will have to appear before the court on charges brought against him by his predecessor, former President Jacob Zuma. Ramaphosa had uh, approached the High Court to interdict Zuma from launching a private prosecution against him. Zuma is charging Ramaphosa for failing to act when the National Prosecuting Authority allegedly unlawfully leaked his medical records to the media. But President Ramaphosa, whose interim application was heard by the South Hotank High Court's full bench in Johannesburg, yesterday doesn't want to appear before the court. To cover all this, we have joining us this morning legal expert, lawyer, Benedict Piri. He joins us from Johannesburg, South Africa. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning and thank you. All right. Benedict, there was a lot happening in court yesterday. I would like you to please run us through a brief overview of the arguments that were pursued and what exactly went down. Yeah, there was a lot for the court to consider. Um, and I think the three main themes... Uh, that came from the matter really related to the jurisdiction of the court, whether uh, a civil court had the ability uh, to stop uh, a criminal uh, process um, and whether that power should actually sit with the criminal court and not with the civil court. There was also the question of whether the matter should have been heard on an urgent basis, meaning that uh, the pre President Ramaphosa should be afforded the ability to be heard uh, outside of the ordinary processes of the court and before any other court litigants, as well as whether um, it was right for the court to grant an interdict uh, pending um, the, the, the set part B of the application, which would be brought by the president, to actually set aside the summons that commenced this private prosecution, as well as the certificate from the National Prosecuting Authority, uh, which would have given him the ability to do so. Uh, with respect to jurisdiction, my sense is that um, the president's lawyers actually made the more compelling case uh, in the sense that the authorities and the pre uh, case law that they relied on uh, was more persuasive and more on point. Um, I think it is established in our law that uh, a civil court does have the ability by virtue of its inherent jurisdiction and powers uh, to, uh, to stop a criminal process that may be um, initiated on a faulty legal basis or if it's abusive or vexatious, uh, which is what has been alleged in this basis. Uh, the urgency point was a lot more contested because what the president needed to show was that if the matter was not heard yesterday, uh, he would not get substantial redress in due course. He focused mainly on the fact that his rights, uh, his constitutional rights were being impaled um, and there would be no justification for those to continue being impelled on the basis of an unlawful process um, while the matter is pending and that those could not be vindicated in, in due course uh, and he'd have to sit through an unlawful process um, a, a, against the face of his constitutional rights. I think the, the Mr. Zuma's lawyers actually gave a good argument on that basis to say, well, well um, this is an inconvenience that would be for anybody else and uh, for that reason the matter was not necessarily urgent and um, he should have actually taken those steps a little bit sooner if he wanted the urgent court to entertain. I think insofar as the interdict is concerned, it intertwines a bit with the urgency question because what the president needed to show was that he has a prima facie right to the relief that he seeks, which I think he did adequately show because firstly, uh, not only his constitutional fair, tra fair trial rights and freedom rights, but also the constitutional right to fair administrative action was actually on the line. Um, and I think the court would find that he does have a prima facie right to ask for that relief. And secondly, I think it's it's true that the harm that would befall the office of the president and him personally, his dignity, would not be irreparable, even if he had to win the case against uh, Mr. Zuma uh, later. Um, and, uh, you know, certainly nothing would happen to Mr. Zuma if he comments this matter later on. Uh, after the matter got, after the president's matter got heard, so he would actually also be successful on the balance of convenience test. And I think the last one is the absence of an alternative remedy. Um, you know, I think the president had made a clear case that there is no alternative remedy in this case. So hard to predict what the outcome will be, but I certainly think that um, the president may have edged it slightly. Uh, but as I said, very hard to predict what the outcome would be based on the submissions that were made yesterday.
Yeah, that's pretty interesting hearing, you know, perspectives on the image of Cyril Ramaphosa. And, you know, I will put a dent on his image, you know, seeing him in the dock and all of that. I, I, I saw a couple of those arguments yesterday, which was, was pretty shocking because Jacob Zuma pretty much went through the same, you know, process. But I want to ask about, you know, what this means. You know, has there, you know, in the past been a private prosecution like this? And what does this really mean for the strength of the South African judicial system? Um, is it likely to strengthen that system? Is this a huge test on South Africa's judiciary um, in general? Yeah, and I think that's a very important question because there have been private prosecutions in the past and some of the cases that the lawyers for both sides put to the court to persuade them uh, either way related to some of these cases. I think we haven't seen one uh, against from a former president against a sitting president. But why this matter is actually important for South Africa's law is that, you know, for the first time, uh, we're actually having the basis upon which a private prosecution uh, is brought tested. Uh, and that's important in the context of the criminal justice system in South Africa as a whole. We know that the National Prosecuting Authority in South Africa struggles somewhat uh, to get criminal cases out of the way. It has been politicized and been used uh, to target political opponents in the past. And certainly the power that a private prosecution gives is it puts a private person in the ability uh, to vindicate a crime if he has the basis to do so. So I think this case will be important to set out the boundaries and the parameters within which that power will be exercised. Because at stake here, there are two important uh, aspects that play into the exercise of that power. And the first is a certificate that's issued by the National Prosecuting Authority that gives you the authority. And secondly, is the actual summons that commences uh, that particular process. And it isn't scrutiny here because what the, what, what the president is actually saying is that uh, it's such an important power that that certificate has to be unassailable and has to be issued in accordance with the correct administrative processes as well as the summons itself. So when the court issues the summons, it has to make sure that all the necessary factors for the issuing of that summons are in place so that that power cannot be exercised arbitrarily or to harass uh, other people. So I think it is an important step in the context of South Africa's private prosecution law because it will clarify the boundaries within, that, within which that power can be exercised. Uh, let's talk about uh, the possibility of, you know, favoritism being seen at play here. Is there maybe any possibility that uh, Cyril Ramaphosa is being favored because Jacob Zuma has accused the bench of being on the side uh, by uh, giving him a full bench? Can you maybe give us an idea into what, why he would say that and what, what this means in essence? So usually um, when an, a, a person brings a matter to the high court, the matter is usually heard by uh, a bench of one single judge. Um, but what the judge president of that court can decide to do uh, if a matter is particularly complex or is particularly important or traverses uh, matters of public interest is to then constitute uh, a bench of three judges to hear the matter. Um, that is a, a discretion that's afforded to the judge president, and it's not the first time that a matter that would have been, you know, heard by one judge would be heard by three judges in the first instance. So that doesn't necessarily indicate a favoritism, uh, and I would say instead it indicates the seriousness with which the court takes the matter and the seriousness at which it 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 foresees that the issues that to be traversed with the matter need actually um, more legal minds to actually opine on the matters uh, and obviously curtail um, a lengthy appeal process should that be necessary. So I don't see that as a favoritism aspect in favor of President Ramaphosa, but more as a matter of uh, prudence from the judge president to ensure that the judgment that the court grants is one that would you know, withstand scrutiny uh, and one that would actually give uh, certainty and confidence to uh, the adjudication of these principles in future. Um, Mr. Piri, I, I, I want to, you know, take away the take conversation away from the, you know, legal perspective now. Um, I saw a comment yesterday that I thought was pretty interesting. I want you to quickly respond to it. It says, and this is from uh, Simon Greendrod, I think it was his name. It says, the same South Africans who took to the streets during Zuma Must Fall as silent in the darkness of escalating failures under the Ramaphosa administration. Uh, can you quickly respond to that in maybe 30 seconds? 
Yeah, well, you know, this matter is not about the failure of Ramaphosa. So I think the, the comment is slightly misplaced within the context of this particular matter because uh, Ramaphosa hasn't failed in any particular instance here. A complaint was made to him about the conduct of legal practitioners and that he must investigate the complaint. Uh, obviously, he is the president. He's not the person to investigate matters that do not fall within his purview. And he directed that complaint to the right people. So I don't think the president in this particular instance uh, has has any failure. So I think the comment in the context of this particular matter is not particularly well placed. But, you know, if you bring in other matters, for instance, para para and other matters that the president may be involved in, maybe it actually is a fair comment, but certainly not in the context of this matter that we're discussing right now. Absolutely. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Robert Puri, for uh, Piri, I beg your pardon, for joining us. And, um, you know, as the, case pleasure, develops, thank you. as the case develops, we would like to also bring you in again. Thanks for your time. Thank you.